Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah and day 13 of the Christmas Craft Countdown where I'm releasing a new Christmas craft project every day for 20 days. Today's project is a 3D craft to go on your table this Christmas. It is a three-dimensional Christmas tree and it comes in two different versions. There's an intricate version and also a slightly simpler version. You can choose to make one or the other or put them together for an even more impressive centerpiece. Let's find out how to make each of these Christmas trees. First, you need to download the cutting file to make this project. If you aren't already signed up to the Christmas Craft Countdown, go to craftwithsarah.com forward slash Christmas 2021 to join. If you have already purchased the countdown, go to craftwithsarah.com forward slash login to log in to your account and access all of the Christmas Craft Countdown files. Once logged in, click into the Christmas Craft Countdown. Scroll down the page and all the files will become available on the date specified. The files do not expire, so you can download them at any time. The files for today's project are under the Day 13 heading. After downloading the cutting files, you'll need to unzip the folder that they come in. If you aren't sure how to do that, check the link in the description of this video, which contains instructions on how to unzip folders on Windows computers, Macs, and Android and iPhone devices. We're going to upload the SVG files into Design Space, and then there's some really important formatting that you need to do before you can cut it out. And that's because you can choose to either make a three-sided tree or a four-sided tree. So I'll show you how to format the file for each different type. First, we're going to go into Upload and then Upload Image. And then have a look on your computer, either by clicking Browse or by dragging and dropping the file. There are two different tree types included. One is one with swirls and the other one has a star and bauble pattern along the side. I'm gonna show you the swirls one. So the file for that is called SVG 3D Tree Swirls. And it's really important you choose the files which start SVG if you're using Cricut Design Space because the other ones won't work. So I drag and drop that in and then you should see it looking like this. And if it does, go ahead and press upload. Now we can click it in our recent uploads and then press add to canvas. Now at the moment, this is just one side of the tree. So we need to do some clever formatting first and then duplicate it for each side we want to put. At the moment, this has got solid lines down the middle, which means your Cricut's actually gonna try and cut that, but we need to change it to a score line. Click on the picture, and then over on the right-hand side, press ungroup. This is now split it into the middle and the outside. So I'll drag these apart so you can see a little bit easier. For each of these little groups that are now left, you've got a basic cut, which is just a straight line, and then the picture underneath. Click on the layer, which is just a vertical straight line, and then in the operation dropdown, change it to score. When you click away, you know that it's done that because it changes to a dashed line. Click it again to select both of those layers and then down the bottom, press attach. And attach is what actually tells the Cricut that we want it to do that score line down the middle of the tree shape. We need to do the same thing with this one. So I've clicked it and then um, let's click the, um, the vertical line. Sorry, we're clicking that layer, change it to score and then click the whole thing and press attach. And that's all there is we need to change. So I'm just gonna put this back in the middle. I need to go arrange, center front. There we go. And now I want to group this all again. So press select all and then group. And now this is grouped, it means we can duplicate it for every single side we want to put on the tree. So I'll press duplicate once. And then I'm making a three-sided tree, so I need to press it again so that I've got three separate tree shapes. If you'd prefer to make a four-sided tree, just duplicate it once more. And now I actually should have resized this before I duplicated it, but I didn't. So no worries, we can do it now. Press select all and then go into align and center. And let's put all of our trees one on top the other. I can now group these again. 
So now this is one big group, which means when I resize it, let's go 11.5 out. No, that won't work. It needs to be 11.5 maximum on the tallest side. So that's the height. I've made my height 11.5 inches, which means the width is just over 11. And I'll cut this out from 12 by 12 craft board or holographic cardstock. So this is going to make a really big, impressive 3D tree for my centerpiece to my table for Christmas dinner. Here are my pieces of the tree and I've got three of the base and then three of the pretty swirly layer. And I've done this from holographic cards, so it has a really wonderful sparkle to it. And it's got lots of different colours when you hold it into the light. So apologies that this might be a bit reflective with my camera lights, but we'll see how we get on. I'm going to start with the base and it's all got a score line down the middle. So all we need to do is just fold upwards along that score line to make a valley fold. So a valley fold is when you're folding up to make a V-shape like a valley. The opposite to that is a mountain fold and that's when you fold it down so that the point comes up. But for this one, we need the valley fold. So just all the way down there and do the same for all three or four base pieces, depending on if you decided to do it with three or four. And do mine with three. And a big part of that was that I only had three sheets of holographic green card left. Um, but I'll show you how you would stick it together for both. All right, so that is then all folded and we can stick it together. And this goes together so quickly. The cutting is definitely the longest part of this, especially if you're using thick card, like holographic card, because I had to put each sheet through twice. And so it was so thick. And that was even on the craft board setting. So what I'm doing now is adding some glue all the way down one half of the back side of one of these trees. You want a lot of glue because this is heavy card and it's going to be stood upright so we don't want it falling apart. And then take another one of the trees and we're going to line up two of the back sides of the card together. So we just line it up so it perfectly matches. There we are. And now this is where it gets a little bit different depending on if you're doing three or four sides. If you're doing four sides, then you would go through and you'd add your next one on one side like this. And then your fourth piece would join both of these sides together so that it's all combined. Because I'm only doing three, my third bit needs to stick to both of these sides. Now we don't want it to be completely flat like this or one side of the tree will look flat and the others won't. So I'm just going to bend it up a bit so that each of those sides is kind of showing the same amount of space. And then I can add my glue onto both sides. This is really big, <laughs> so it's a bit hard to fit into the frame of the camera. You need to add the glue to both sides if you're making a three-sided tree. Okay, now I can line this up down that score line and then stick the sides down so that it lines up with the other two. And we're trying to form sort of a triangle with those bottom points, which you can kind of see there. So they're all equally open at each side. And it might take a little while to dry, depending on what glue you're using. So be patient with it. And don't move on to the next step until all of your glue is dry. So I'm just going to pause my video and wait for it to dry. You can see it is standing up already. And I've got that triangle point on all of the different sides. Whilst I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to prepare the swirly bits. 
And for these, we're just doing exactly the same. We're going to value fold along the score line. This is a bit more tricky because of all the gaps in the card. It just it doesn't always want to bend where you want it to. So you might need to go down the score line again with um, a scoring tool or something to make it a bit deeper if you're struggling. Uh, I tend to just kind of use my nails, my fingernails to start it off. And then once it starts bending, the rest of it sort of follows in place. Okay, I'm going to be careful not to bend anywhere that's not supposed to be bent. And then just flatten it down in half. I don't want it to be completely flat. I want it to pop out a little bit so that when it's all assembled, these edges will pop out from the green underneath. But there's one bit. And then I need to do the same with the other two. All right, I've got my base. I've got my little pieces. So let's get these stuck on. And you could, if you wanted to, completely stick them down with glue over the whole thing. But I like to just put the glue down the middle so that you get the edges pop out and it just looks a bit more tree-like and a bit more exciting. So how I'm gonna do it is with my glue, I'm gonna go down the score line on the bottom green. And don't go all the way to the top or the bottom because this inner bit is a little bit smaller. I'm just gonna go up again so there's lots of glue in there. And then take one of my inside bits and just drop it into place. So the score line of the inner bit matches the score line of the outer bit. And then I'm just going to hold it in place for that glue to take, which can take a little while, especially with holographic card. The glue just doesn't seem to want to stick as well as it does on normal card. I think because it's kind of plasticky, it's not got anything to soak into, so it doesn't dry as quick. So I'm going to hold this for a while, and then when it's dry, I'm going to do exactly the same on the other two sides, and then that will be the tree finished. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make 3D Christmas tree centerpieces with a cutting machine. I'll be back again tomorrow with another Christmas craft, but until then, thank you for watching. Bye!